five things that nearly shut my prophetic vision and experiences. Or better still, the things that nearly shut me as a prophet. Number one was the wrong knowledge in God's word. What you need to understand when it comes to the word of God is that God has given each man the grace to be able to divide the word. But brother, watch out because if you're a prophet, there are certain food in the word you cannot eat. Not because it is not God's word, but it's because it does not edify or bring you to the space of which you can grow in the prophetic. I used to follow a lot of teachers and that was because I desired to teach the word. But you see, as I was following these teachers, the more my vision was becoming blurred and the more I couldn't see. That was because my interest to prophesy started diminishing because those teachers I was following were not in supportive of the prophetic. They were not supportive when it comes to revelations and things like mentioning names, numbers and stuff like that. In fact, some of them kicked against said. But I was just following the message in court, grace. So I felt there was no need to even mention people's names and stuff like that. And, you know, prophesy that way. Just let me be a normal prophet, teach the word, pray for people and close. Then God called me one night in a dream and warned me to stick to my script and not another man's script. So the wrong information concerning the prophetic is going to keep you stagnant. This is why you must look for someone who is tested and tried in the prophetic for uh, some time and follow and learn from. I didn't have the opportunity to meet any of these great prophets like Prophet Hubert Angel, um, Prophet um, T.B. Joshua and all these great men of God, Apostle Johnson, Suleiman and, you know, wonderful. I couldn't get the opportunity to meet them. So if you have the opportunity to listen to them and sit under them, please don't abuse sit don't misbehave with it embrace it and learn from them because some of us didn't get the opportunity no money to fly to nigeria or to go to uk or zimbabwe i was just in my corner go on youtube try to search and some of the informations they will just give you something you know what is there already so this was my story until I began to sit down and go through the word and follow each prophet, how he was able to prophesy, how he did it, until I discovered um, Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 1. That was where my change of story began. So the right teaching in the prophetic will catapult you into a higher pedestal. Number two was fear and doubt. Fear and doubt nearly crippled me. The reason was that I was that type of person that I didn't feel I was worthy enough to minister well because there were open of times as a Christian you may stumble one way or the other and because of those mistakes, you intend to start blaming yourself, accusing yourself, staying in guilt, feeling that sense of unworthiness, not qualified, that kind of attitude. So because of this, and that was because of the wrong knowledge 
I had concerning what Jesus has done for me. So I thought you needed to attain certain amount of sanctification, purification, you know, and holiness to a point of you not doing any mistake so that you can be able to flow in the prophetic. But not until the Lord began to sit me down and teach me what he did for me. So when I knew what Jesus did on the cross, I know it is not by might. It is not by power. I used to think you have to fast till your head is tearing. That is when you can hear from God. Until the Lord brought me to the word that even before you were a sinner, I came and died for you. You see that? So whilst I was a sinner, Jesus even spoke to me. He spoke to my heart to accept the Lord. Let alone that now that I'm born again, that I need to fast for him to talk to me? No. So God do not speak to you only when you are fasting. So when I got the right information, then my confidence, my faith begin to spring up. And any time there is fear in you too much, you should understand that you are not dealing with a faith problem. You are dealing with a love problem. Because love is the opposite of fear. But faith is the opposite of sight. So we walk not by sight, but we walk by faith. You see that? So when I discovered this in the scriptures, it boosted my confidence. So when I watch all these senior men of God, senior prophets, do their things, I build confidence and tell myself that what he has done, I will do the same. What he is doing, I will do the same. So I will watch the videos a couple of times, play them over. There was, there's one apostle um, in Ethiopia called Apostle um, Tamarat or Tamarat. Yeah, I will watch his prophecies over and over and the simplicity of it. And I'll be like, wow, look at this. And I will watch some of the prophecies of um, Prophet David Raul. I'll watch some of the prophecies of um, our, our Emmanuel Makandiwa. I will just watch across and I will begin to see, to look at which one that I can also flow in so i build my confidence looking at them as human beings so if they can do it if god can use them that way then god can use me that way so i agreed with myself that i am a prophet and nothing can change that because i used to go trying to prophesy and i can't do it i will be limited when i try to flow it looks like the information is not coming then so I will hold still. I, I will just tell the person, I, I declare over your life, it is well, whatever God wants to do, you will do in Jesus' name. And that ends the thing. Until God just whispered to me that, I did not humans like you. I did not men like you. I did not saint like you. What do you think that they know that is making them what they are? And I realized that one of them is confidence. So if there's anything I've learned from the prophet Hubert Angel is his confidence. His confidence and boldness. The way that man has audacity in, in declaring God's word. Oh my God, it's admirable. I watched people like Prophet Bernard L. Bernard. And as the minister, I'm like, wow, my father, what is this? Prophet Bernard will minister so gloriously in the prophetic and I'll be there watching. I'm like, God, when will I be able to obtain this altitude, this dimension? So the third thing that came, that nearly shut my prophetic ministry was competition. You know, when you began to um, start flowing a bit in little, little dimensions in the prophetic, if you don't take time, you will be tempted to begin to compare 
yourself with others and try to compete with others. See the way he did it. Let me also prove to people that I am a prophet. That was my mind until the Lord told me it is foolishness. Yes, I wanted to compete. I wanted a challenge. I wanted somebody we could prophesy and compete and stuff like that. And the Lord told me this is not my way. Because they that compare themselves among themselves are not wise. So I realized that even in the prophetic sin, each of us has our own versions of the prophetic. My version may not be the same version of the prophetic you will pray in. Yes. So let no other prophet despise another prophet. Let us all do the work of the kingdom, regardless of who we are. The fourth thing that nearly shut my prophetic ministry was the demon, or should I say, of impatience. I was not patient at all. I wanted to be the fastest prophet. You know, and that is because some fathers have not taught us well. They kept in our minds that this one is the fastest prophet, the sharpest prophet, things like that. So I also try to flow that way. But more, I realized that impatience made me give prophecies I regretted. Not because they were not accurate, but because I did not take time to really analyze it well and be able to give it out. So I caused a lot of trouble. You understand? There were many troubles I caused because there are prophecies that you cannot openly say them. You were supposed to give to the people in their privates. See, but I... Uh, I will just see because I've seen it. I wanted to be the fastest, the sharpest. And I didn't know that that would ruin my prophetic ministry. Because there are people who cannot stand that. And yet they need to hear the information. So as a prophet, along the years and times, I began to develop the key of patience. Patience in waiting. For the Lord to tell me, speak, then I will speak. There are things you may be seeing in the spirit. It doesn't mean share them. God might show you, but will tell you, keep it for the appointed time. Write this vision down for the appointed time. But impatient will make me just blow it out like that. Real. You see that? And the thing that nearly shut my prophetic ministry is inconsistency. I was not consistent at all. And that was because I felt like um, why every day prophesying at least, you know, I should teach and prophesy once. And the Lord said, you are not a teacher. You are a prophet. The fact that you have the ability to teach does not mean your teaching gift should outweigh your prophetic gift. You see that? A lot of people don't know that the Bible is the word of God and prophecy is also the word of God. Just that prophecy is not being tested yet. So it has to be tested. So when it's tested and it is found to be true and to be authentic, it must not be played with. You see that? So there are people who are forcing every prophet to teach. That cannot be true. This is why most prophets now go to the extreme of teaching heretics. Every prophet must not be a teacher if he doesn't have the teaching skills. Let him preach, prophesy, 
when Andabos met Apostle Paul, Andabos was not a preacher. He was simply a prophet. He was in the church releasing prophecies. So there are prophets that are meant to just be in the church giving prophecies to the members and telling the church the mind of God in a particular season or in a season. But I was not consistent. If I do it today, I will wait for the following uh, week to do it again. So I was prophesying once in a month. Then I came to once in a week. Then there are times for two weeks I wouldn't do it. But let me tell you, this is what slows down the prophetic. You must be consistent if you want to be sensitive. The reason is that when God introduces a dimension in your life, you have to be consistent, persistent, so that you can become familiar with the environment in the dimension. If you become familiar in the dimension, it is easy for you to operate anywhere and anytime. So God bless you so much. These are some of the tips that I believe will help you to rise up in your prophetic life. God bless you. Bye.